Okay, so let's combine your knowledge of quadratic equations and logarithms to see if you can figure out the solution to this equation right here. And uh, a lot of people are going to struggle with this because of this part of the problem, assuming they know how to solve quadratic equations. But uh, feel free to use a calculator to do this problem. But in actuality, this problem is pretty easy to solve without the aid of a calculator. So if you want to challenge yourself, put your calculator aside. But if you can figure out the solution to this equation, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, we'll walk through step-by-step step how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, let me go ahead and uh, take one more look, or let's take one more look at this problem before I show you the solution. So what we have here is x squared minus 4x is equal to log base 2 of 32. Again, uh, figuring this out without the aid of a calculator is something that you should be able to do, especially if you're at this level of math uh, where you are learning about logarithms. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So the correct answer for this equation is the following. X is equal to negative 1 and X is equal to 5. So there are two solutions here because we are dealing with a quadratic equation, which of course always has two solutions. Now, if you got this right, that is super good. Matter of fact, I have to give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. You can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in solving equations, uh, quadratic equations with logarithms. All right, so again, uh, if you're at, well, I would say, at the Algebra 2, college algebra level, this is a problem that you should be able to do pretty easily. But if you are totally confused, well, let's go ahead and get into the solution. And in a few minutes, you'll be looking like this person. Okay, so first things first. First, we have to kind of assess what type of uh, equation we're dealing with. All right, now here, this x squared, we're dealing with a second-degree polynomial equation. So this is a quadratic equation. All right, so this little two right here uh, by something called the fundamental theorem of algebra is going to tell us that we have two solutions. And kind of what type of solutions? Well, they could be real and or imaginary. But the tricky part of this problem is this thing right here. Okay, we have log base 2, 32. And a lot of people might be confused. I'm like, I could solve this, but this part right here is confusing me. I just don't know what to do with this log base 2, 32. Well, this is simply a number, okay? This is a number, it's a value. Now, if you don't understand logarithms, of course, you're not going to understand how to do this problem. So let's quickly go through how to uh, read log 2, uh, 32, log base 2, excuse me, 32. Now, this is a huge topic. Matter of fact, in mathematics at this algebra 2, college algebra level, pre-calculus level, uh, you know, to learn about logarithms and exponential functions, uh, this is like a full chapter or full unit. And if you need, um, you know, additional help with log uh, logarithms or uh, and all exponential functions, all this stuff, uh, I'm going to direct you. Matter of fact, I'll just tell you right now, check out my Algebra 2 and or pre-calculus course links. Uh, you'll find those in the description of this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. And what is log base 2, 32? Well, we have to go down and take a look at this. All right, so when you think of logarithms, I want you to think of bacon and eggs. Now, you might be saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I think you lost your mind. What are you talking about bacon and eggs? That's like, uh, you know, food. Well, yes, indeed. It's just a nice little kind of memory device. So here's a plate, and we have some bacon right here, and we have some eggs. So bacon and eggs. Now, what is, you know, bacon and eggs? Well, it's just a little memory device, and hopefully this is ingrained <laughs> in your long-term memory. Uh, so bacon and eggs is something that you want to remember when you want to understand logarithms. Okay, so when we look at a logarithm, we have B-A-E. Of course, this is our bacon and eggs, specifically the B and then the A and then the E. All right, so uh, when we read a log, okay, a log has a certain base. That's what the B stands for. 
the A is the answer and the E is the exponent. So a log to a certain base has an answer uh, and that's equal to the exponent. So right here, this doesn't make a lot of sense, but it will make sense uh, as I show you this. Okay, so let's take a look at this bacon egg stuff, right? So log B A is equal to E. So when you have a power, okay, like two to the third power, the three up here is the exponent, the two is the base, right? The entire thing is a power. So two to the third power, of course, is equal to what? That's eight. Eight is our answer, okay? So uh, we just kind of have to review some basic terminology of power. So we have a base to a certain exponent and that's equal to an answer. So this log BAE is the same thing. So when we think of writing a logarithm, what we're doing is we're taking a power expression like two to the third power is equal to eight and we're writing it in this form. So we're gonna have log, the base, the answer is equal to the exponent. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. All right, so two to the third power is equal to eight. So how can we use um, log notation to write this right here? Well, we would go ahead and uh, have log. So we're thinking bacon and egg. So what's the base here? Well, the base is two, right? So we even make this color coded. And what is the answer? The answer is eight, okay? And uh, what is the exponent here? Uh, well, that is three. Okay, so this expression right here uh, is equal to this expression. This is an exponential. Um, form of writing this power, and uh, we're writing the same thing using logarithms. Okay, so hopefully you understand this, and if you do, what we'll be, well, we can basically figure out what this log uh, base 2, 32 is equal to. All right, again, I'm not going to be using a calculator, but uh, let's go ahead and see how we can do this. All right, so log base 2, 32. So what does this mean? Well, log base 2, 32 is equal to what? Well, it's equal to some answer. The answer represents the exponent, right? So remember, we're talking about bacon and eggs. So let's rewrite this. So we have log base two, so we have a base of two, okay? Uh, the answer is 32, and then, of course, um, uh, the ant that's what the answer is. So it's two to some exponent, right? So two to what power is equal to 32? Well, hopefully you can be like, well, all right, two to the first, two to the second, no, that's four, two to the third is eight, two to the fourth, um, is uh, 16, two to the fifth, yes indeed, two to the fifth is equal to uh, 32, right? Because two times two times two times two times two, five uh, twos multiplied together is 32. So the exponent here is five. So when you evaluate, and of course you can do this in your calculator, you have to use something called the change of base formula, uh, but that's pretty simple. Uh, again, there's a lot of stuff here that I'm not covering and if you need additional help with logarithms, check out my Algebra 2 and or pre-calculus course. But really, log base 2 of 32, when you uh, plug this into your calculator, uh, the answer is uh, what? Well, it's the exponent, okay? Because remember, bacon and eggs. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. And in this case, the exponent is 5, right? So we can actually have a 5 right here, right? Because 2 to the 5th is equal to... Uh, the answer of 32. Okay, so this whole value is nothing but a fancy five. And so let's go to replace that log base two of 32 with five. Okay, so now we have this lovely quadratic equation. So it's uh, up to you at this point to see if you can uh, solve this uh, nice trinomial, qu uh, quadratic trinomial x squared minus four x is equal to five. All right, so now we're into another phase of this problem. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I definitely need your support. You see, what I'm trying to do is teach as many people as I possibly can in mathematics. That's why I do these videos, and I've been doing them for well over 10 plus years. Matter of fact, I have well over 2,500 uh, videos from basic math to advanced math and everything uh, in between. Now. My YouTube videos are kind of like quick uh, little tutorials. You know, I kind of like to have fun with it. They're kind of informal, right? But hopefully they do provide you a lot of value. But at some point, if you are trying to learn mathematics, you need, you know, real actual formal instruction and practice. You know, you really want to be a part of a good course or curriculum. 
So if you need help beyond this video in uh, the area of logarithms, quadratic equations, et cetera, et cetera, again, refer to my main courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. All right, so thanks uh, for letting me tell you uh, why I do what, what I do, uh, but make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so now that we know that uh, log base two of uh, 32 is nothing more than a five, we can solve this uh, quadratic equation. All right, so what we wanna do here is write this thing in standard form. So we're gonna move the five over to the other side of the equation. And uh, again, standard form means that our trinomial is written from highest to lowest power. So we have our x squared or x, then our number term, and we have this thing set equal to zero. Now, uh, there's a whole discussion here that we can get into on how we solve quadratic equations. This in and of itself is another full chapter or unit in a typical algebra course. So whether you're taking like algebra one or algebra two, there is a complete multiple sections, you know, uh, you know, at least two to three weeks uh, that you're gonna study quadratic functions, quadratic equations. So, you know, how, what you do, the methods and techniques that we use to solve this, you know, it's a lot to learn there, right? Uh, same thing with uh, logarithmic and exponential functions, a lot to learn. So again, if you need help beyond what I'm gonna do here, refer to those courses. All right, so the best thing that we wanna tr uh, try to do is to see if we can factor this quadratic uh, trinomial, because it, if we can factor it, well, then we can easily solve it. Now uh, here, this is what I call a case one quadratic trinomial. The coefficient is one, okay? so. What we can do, and uh, you don't have to do this, but I like to do this because this uh, procedure, this technique is one way that you can factor. So if you're struggling in factoring, this is a nice little uh, kind of tip for you to factor these type of quadratic trinomials. Now trinomials where the leading coefficient is one, this is the way you would do it. So one times negative uh, five, or this number here is negative five. Now what we wanna do is look at the factors of negative five, and we wanna uh, look at the factors such that uh, those factors add up to negative four. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Again, this is a little shortcut. Some of you already know how to factor this, and that is fantastic, but let's suppose you are having a tough time with factoring quadratic trinomials. All right, so here's our negative five, and what we're gonna do is look at factors of negative five. So uh, what numbers, what are the factors of negative five? Well, one and five, right? We could have negative one times a positive five, that's negative five, or positive one times a negative five, that's negative five. Now you wanna look at the sum of these factors. Okay, so negative one plus a positive five is a positive four, and a positive one plus a negative five is a negative four. And you wanna look at these factors right here, or the sum of these uh, factors, and you wanna look to see are um, any of these combinations um, add up to this middle number right here, negative four. And we can see that these two right here add up to negative four. Well, the, uh, these numbers right here, one and negative five, is what we can use uh, to factor this quadratic trinomial, right? So one and negative five. So we're gonna plug this in into our two binomials, so x and x, uh, plus one minus five, right? And that comes from these two numbers right here. Now this is again a short a shortcut technique uh, to factor uh, trinomials. Again, factoring another big, huge area uh, that a lot of students struggle in. And again, if you need help, I just reference my courses. All right, so x squared minus four, x minus five, we can factor in the, uh, these two binomials. So now we can easily solve this quadratic equation because remember, we're setting this thing equal to zero, so we can use the zero product property. So this thing times this thing is equal to zero. Uh, if I have something and I multiply by something else and the answer is zero, well then this or this or both of these, both of these factors must be equal to zero, so that's the zero product property. So we're gonna set each factor equal to zero and solve. All right, so x plus one is equal to zero. We get x is equal to negative one x minus five is equal to zero, we get x is equal to five. Again, we're dealing with a quadratic equation, uh, so we're gonna have two solutions, and here they are. Okay, so again, at this level of math, 
you know, you're not going to do everything in a vacuum. In other words, it's not going to always just be quadratic equations or just always, uh, you know, logarithms. You know, you're going to oftentimes see equations where you have, you know, qu uh, quadratic equations with logarithms. You know, they're not all that common, but they are, you know, common enough where you need to be able to confidently handle a problem like this. Okay, so hopefully, uh, hopefully this little video helped you out and gave you some uh, confidence on doing these type of problems. You certainly can learn this level of math, but you're going to have to be dedicated. You're going to have to, you know, practice, practice, practice. Don't get overconfident by just solving a few easy problems, okay? If you really want to do is build your math skills, you're going to have to challenge yourself with more difficult problems. But uh, you know what? I know you can do it, and hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math and adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.